good afternoon and welcome to the 166th episode of the Georgia Farm Bureau Georgia Prep Sports Drive for the GHSA state title. I'm really excited about today's guest. It's going to be Milton head coach Ben Reeves. We have not had him on yet this season and they have had quite a run. They are 3-0 and in Region 6 right now and they're going to close out the season with Denmark this week and then a massive game against Lambert. I think it's interesting about Milton. They actually have not lost a region game since 2017, so they are trying to keep that streak alive. They've been playing outstanding football. And then we're also going to have on Northside Columbus head coach Andrew Oropesa, and they are attempting to win their first ever region title. They have a big game against McIntosh this week, and it's actually their season finale. So really excited to talk to him in the second slot. And then Najee's going to come on uh, to close out the show. We've got big transfer news. Uh, we'll get into that. We'll look at some of the upcoming slate and then also talk about what we have coming up uh, tomorrow, actually, and then in the weeks ahead as basketball is getting ready to tip off. We've got volleyball state championships coming up, softball. Uh, it's kind of that point where the fall is going into the winter. So really busy, lots to get into. So we'll go ahead and get started with Coach Reeves. All right, Coach, thank you for coming on. So uh, just talk about this latest win against West Forsyth. Uh, when we mentioned it last week, that was a game that West Forsyth had to win uh, just to stay alive and keep their playoff hopes going. So how were you guys able to come out, just play a, a great football game and uh, that Milton brand of football? Yeah, first off, thank you for having me on the show and just allowing to, to talk about Milton football. But Secondly, like you brought up, you know, there's just a lot of pride within the program. Uh, you mentioned we haven't lost a region game since 2017, so we're going for 27 straight on Friday. Five straight region titles is, is what we're going for as well, if we can close out these last two games. But, you know, we played a tough schedule early on. We challenged our kids, our three losses this season. Uh, every team is in the top 100 in the country. You know, we lost to Lipscomb. I think they're up to number 13 in the country. And Christian Brothers, the number one team out of Missouri. North Cobb was playing great football. They're ranked pretty high. So the purpose of that was just to prepare our kids for these tough region games that we knew we'd have coming up. And I think that we were able to rely on some lessons that we learned early on of just continuing to play hard, continuing to play for each other. And we just leaned on some of those, um, you know, principles th this past Friday. Yeah, we'll talk about all those games. I mean, all three of those were close. I thought you guys were in the games. You guys could have even won them. But I want to talk about that first one. You said Lipscomb Academy, number 13 in the entire country right now. I think what stands out about this year's Milton team is, I mean, typically, I think we even highlighted you guys as a program that's basically – the top school for running backs over the years. You guys have been so great running the ball, but this year you got Luke Nickel at quarterback, your sophomore, you got a ton of talented receivers, and it's really been the, the passing attack that has kept you guys moving. Yeah, for sure. You know, we had a uh, just unbelievable offensive line and, and running back last season, and, you know, we returned one offensive starter from that team. Everybody that we're playing – other than DeBron Gatling, essentially had, you know, no real varsity experience. So, you know, we were young. And one thing that we're always going to try to do here at Milton is just build our offense and our defense around the guys that we do have, build it to their strengths. So if we have to throw the ball every play, we'll do that. If we have to run the ball every play, we're fine doing that as well, just as long as we're asking our kids to do what suits them best. And this year, um, you know, we are a little more pass heavy, RPO heavy. Than we've been in the past, but that's just the personnel that we have. Um, personally, I, I think that's a little more fun. You know, I, I enjoyed, you know, the games and scoring points last year, but uh, it's, it's more fun just to get out there and mix it up and be able to be more balanced with play calls. And I know that uh, there's only one football, so all the positions on the field enjoy the balance as well. And just talk a little bit about your previous role within Milton and just uh... – kind of how the staff has changed uh, after Clack left. Yeah, so I've been the offensive coordinator here since 2017. And whenever I took over as head coach, I knew that um, I wanted to turn the offense over and really just focus on managing the team, 
coaching the small things, uh, trying to be and learn to be the best head coach that I can be right now. Because there's a lot to learn, and some of it is just on-the-job training, as you know. So I went out and I hired two of the best coordinators in the state. I uh, got Stevie Jackson from North Gwinnett as my offensive coordinator, and David Willingham came from Lanier, who was also in Gwinnett County as my defensive coordinator. Been able to hire some really good assistants around them, uh, a lot of high-profile guys that our kids are, are really drawn to, and they pour into our kids on a daily basis. So just being able to, to get that staff together has really allowed me to focus on being the best head coach I can be, and I love sitting back and just watching those guys do what they do and go to work. Yeah, and we'll talk about some of these matchups. You mentioned uh, Stevie Jackson, offensive coordinator, David Willingham, defensive coordinator. I'm looking at uh, some of the success you've had in the last few weeks. Your special teams have really been outstanding. Uh, the Wyatt Smalley blocked punt. I think you guys had a 52-yard field goal recently in that Forsyth Central game. So who's kind of been leading that effort? Yeah, so our, our running back coach, Vinny Silvestri, is also our special yeah. teams coordinator. And he does a phenomenal job on a weekly basis. Um, I can't say enough good things about him and the job that he does. He also, you know, takes a lot off my plate. I don't really have to step in and, and help with special teams at, either because he does such a good job with it. You know, he's been running that unit for a couple of years now. And in my opinion, he's, um, he, he's peaking right now. He, he's having an incredible year just as a coach and as a special teams coordinator. And, you know, we, we use special teams as a weapon. It's not something that we just have to get out there and do. We're going to try to put the best kids we can out there and see if we can steal some possessions and steal some points with it. Yeah, Vinny Silvestri, yeah, he's been there. He's outstanding coach for sure. So what did you see in that first game against, against Lipscomb Academy just in terms of uh, Luke getting out there in the spotlight as a sophomore at quarterback uh, leading this attack? Yeah, so – you know, from Luke on down, the challenge to, my, to this team was we're going to be inexperienced. Uh, we're going to be young at some spots. We may be, you know, uh, outmatched at some spots. But if we can just play hard and empty our tanks and play with relentless effort, as we like to call it, we'll be in every single football game. And that's what I saw in game one was a team that didn't play scared, a team that emptied their tank, gave us all that they had, and at the end, you know, we still had a chance to win it. It was a 10-point game. We missed two field goals, uh, you know, had some other opportunities to score points. We just didn't. But from Luke on down, I was just impressed with how the kids attacked the game, attacked the atmosphere. And the thing about Luke, and, you know, he's got all of the uh, skills to obviously play quarterback, but he's got the intangibles too. He doesn't get rattled. He plays with grit. He's a great leader. Uh, you're just not going to shake him. You're not going to get into his head. And that's so rare, not only for a high school quarterback, but also for a sophomore high school quarterback. So we're excited about him and just the future that he's going to have here as well. Yep, and he's had a great connection with DeBron Gatlin, who you mentioned, uh, your junior receivers, having such an incredible season. Uh, then you guys played Christian Brother. Yeah, you said they were the number one team in Missouri right now. That was a 2020 game at the half. You guys end up coming up short. Uh, what did you just learn in that second game, though, just uh, building off that first one, playing another tough opponent that you might not be familiar with? Yeah, you know, some of the same lessons. You know, we try each year to make sure that we take our trip uh, to somewhere that will give the kids an experience of a lifetime. So this season we took them up to Ohio and played in an event up there. I actually played in the Hall of Fame Stadium. Uh, Awesome, awesome trip. A lot of team bonding. Only one of our players had ever been to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So just good stuff in that trip all around. But getting to the game, a team that came out and played hard and didn't play scared. I mean, if you looked at our team pregame and you looked across the field at their team, there was a drastic difference in just the size of the players, the maturity of the players. But our kids didn't back down. They played hard. It was tied at halftime. Uh, we came out after halftime and, you know, took some risk. Some things didn't go our way, but still, we were in it till the very end. We played that game without, you know, our top safety, Bryce Thornton. He didn't play in the Christian Brothers game. He didn't play in, uh, you know, a couple of the games this season due to a little ankle injury. He's back full speed now, thankfully. 
But, you know, our kids just got out there and fought. Whoever was available next man up did their job to the best of their ability, and we went toe-to-toe with another top team in the country. Certainly. Uh, Luke in that game, 316 yards, three touchdowns. DeBron, 12 catches, 140 yards, two touchdowns. Your running back, Scott Moskowitz, had a great game running and catching. And then defensively, I mean, Robert Billings, he had 12 tackles, a forced fumble, also was contributing offensively. And then uh, Jack Lawson and Owen Phillips, looks like they've really uh, been standouts on that defensive side with uh, Will Parton. Absolutely. You know, all those guys that you just mentioned, uh, you know, Mark Esley had a good game uh, week two as well. All those guys have just been warriors for us. Uh, they're, they're just out there competing. Like I said, given, given what they have, I know that I, I'm saying that a lot, but it's a constant theme on this team this year. It's what we take pride in. Can we play harder than the other team and just, you know, maximize our, our talents, our abilities, and all those guys go out and do that on a weekly basis. Yep, and then you closed out that incredibly difficult non-region schedule. You had the Roswell game. That's, in my opinion, been one of the craziest rivalries in the state in recent years. Every single year, it is just a incredibly uh, eventful and close game. And then Alpharetta after that, they've been outstanding. And then North Cobb. So talk about just closing out the non-region with Roswell, Alpharetta, North Cobb, and just how huge that was for just testing your team and getting you guys prepared for this uh, region run. Yeah, so, you know, Roswell and Alpharetta, those games came at a really good time for us because we knew that, you know, we gave our all in those first two games. But still, any time that you start out 0-2, it's not characteristic of this program. So, there were a lot of people on the outside questioning, you know, myself, the coaching staff, the players. So we just all bonded together and we were hungry for a win. And then you add in the fact that it was Roswell at home. Uh, we were just motivated beyond belief. And there was just no way that our kids were going to lose that game. We won 14 to seven. It actually came down to the very last play of the game. Essentially, they had the ball on the four yard line, fourth down. Our defense came through and made a huge stop with about 20 seconds left. So we were able to snap the ball one time and just, just knee it out. So one of the best high school football games that I've ever been a part of. Uh, definitely a memorable first head coaching win, a game that I'll always, always remember. And after we won that game, you know, winning is a cure-all. Our team needed a little taste of success, and they just got hungry for more. And then next week we go to play Alpharetta, another rivalry game. And Alpharetta is, is a good football team. They're loaded. Uh, they, were, they were flying high on offense. You know, we knew it was going to be their year to, to be really good and make a run, and it was going to be really tough for us to beat them. But our kids, they got a taste of winning, and they, and they didn't want to go back to losing. And they played hard that game. Special teams was a huge factor in that game. And, uh, you know, we're able to – come out of a, a hostile environment with a win. And then we get to North Cobb, and, you know, North Cobb is a, is a tough place to play. There's something about playing North Cobb and playing North Cobb on TV that just has not been good for our program. So I'm going to make sure if we ever play them again over there that we're not on TV. And we, we changed the juju up a little bit. But, you know, it just wasn't our night. You, ha you go through nights to where – Things just aren't clicking. It's hard to get in rhythm, and, and that's how it was for us that night. It was disappointing, but still it gave us some stuff to work on, some stuff to correct in an off week before we hit region play. So, you know, it, it was a loss in the win-loss column, but we took it as, a, as some lessons that we needed to learn and some things that needed to be exposed that we needed to correct that uh, we were able to. So hopefully it, it won't bite us in the butt with these games that matter for playoff seeding and region titles and state championships. Yeah, that North Cobb team, they've got a very dangerous defense, great front seven, and a ton of great players in the secondary as well. Uh, but in that Roswell game, you talked about just how big that was for your young team to get a win and not only just a win against Roswell. That obviously means a lot for the Milton program. But I'm looking at it, I mean, all these interceptions you guys had, you had a blocked punt, a blocked field goal. I mean, how many different players just, like, stepped up in key moments to fight for that win? Yeah, I mean, every everybody was selling out. Everybody was doing their job 
you know, everybody took it personal, like I said, and, and committed to we're not going to lose. And it wasn't just, hey, you know, defense, we need you to do it, or offense, we need you to do it. Everybody on that field decided that night that we were going to stay down there until we left with a victory, and they played like it. And it showed, and people were able to make big plays in key moments because of the mindset that they played with. Yeah, and then I'm looking at your punter, Chase Trubel. It looks like he's been really big for you guys with uh, just a monster leg. Yeah, Chase Trouble, he's uh man, he he's killing the ball right now. He's uh versatile. You know, we can use a couple of different kicking styles with him. Uh he's an athletic kid, so he's able to move around a little bit back there. And he uh I can't I can't say enough good things about him. I'm glad that he's on our side because he can definitely flip the flip the field at any moment of the game. And then a guy that has had some explosive plays, I think he had the punt return in the Alpharetta game. He had a 53-yard run this last week. Uh, Wyatt, is it Wyatt Nave? Yep, Wyatt Nave. Senior, uh, you know, receiver, punt returner, plays a little bit of DB. He's just an incredible athlete. You know, he uh, he can do so many so many good things with the football. He's one of those guys that you can kind of stick at any position, and, and he's going to be good at it just due to his athleticism. And he definitely found a way, whether it was on special teams, offense, or defense, to impact several games for us already this season. <clears throat> Absolutely. And so you guys come off those back-to-back -back big wins. You talked about the North Cobb one, one that didn't necessarily go your way. But, I mean, this region you guys find yourselves in just, I mean, first glance, it's pretty much obvious to anyone that – I mean, there's tons of depth. You have teams like Denmark. They were a region champion last year. Uh, South Forsyth, they're tremendous. Lambert, I mean, look at what they've done this year. So, I mean, what did you see just in that first uh, game from your players just once you get into that stretch where they really, uh, I mean, those games start to really matter? Oh, he's not there. My bad. I was looking down. So, the South Forsyth win, the reason I thought that one was interesting they were down 7 nothing in that first quarter, and then they had a really big second quarter, put up three touchdowns, took the lead 21-14, and then closed out a 35-28 victory. Uh, Luke Nickel probably had his best passing performance of the season in terms of efficiency. 19 of 25, 270 yards, three touchdowns. And then Scott Moskowitz, uh, the running back, he also had a big game. Okay. I lost you minute uh, yeah no I'm, problem I'm back, just though. one more just question coach uh, I was just talking Whenever. about your region you mentioned uh, your 27 straight region win streak uh, what have you just seen from Denmark in particular this season just a tough team that you'll be facing off with this week coach can you hear me okay well, interesting. Thank you, Coach, for coming on. Uh, we will definitely be following in your next two weeks. But uh, in terms of Denmark, uh, they've had some big wins, but also some tough losses recently, in particular last week. Uh, Lambert beat them 39-31. That was a game where Denmark was up early, I believe. And so, obviously, uh, Coach Reeves was watching that one closely. Those are his next two opponents. And so he probably has a good idea of how talented they are, and uh, he's going to get to play. Oh, we got him? Hey, Coach, just last question. What uh, Denmark and Lambert played last week. I mean, what's your just impression of those two programs this year? Yeah, so both are going to be tough games for us. Denmark, you don't look at their record. They had some injuries early on. They got a very good football team, a very good defense, and it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a battle whenever we, we go over there. A lot of pride within that program as well. And then Lambert, they're on fire right now. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of playing well is, is just, you know, execution and belief. And I think that they're peaking at both of those, um, on both of those areas right now. But, we're not even thinking about Lambert because Denmark is such a good football team that, you know, we got to make sure that we take care of business and play our best football against them first. And if we're able to do that, we'll start looking at Lambert and figuring out, uh, you know, what we can do to give ourselves a chance to beat those guys as well. Absolutely. Certainly going to be a big test for your offense. Your defense have been playing great and just all those big plays you guys have been producing in special teams. It will be a really exciting 
way to close out this season. Thank you so much for coming on, Coach, and good luck. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yep. Go Eagles. All right. So, yeah, big games for Milton coming up. We'll be watching them, of course. We'll have that Denmark-Milton score updated throughout the broadcast on Friday. And you can also go to scoretail.com, check out some of our previews for this week. But before we go to our next guest, we're going to thank our sponsors, Georgia Farm Bureau. Our mission has always been to support Georgia farmers. That's why we created Georgia Farm Bureau Mutual Insurance Company providing financial protection that farmers needed. While this remains the same today, we've grown to protect all Georgians through home, auto, and life insurance. From the very beginning and into the future, we stand for every Georgia community. We are our Farm Bureau. All right, welcome back. So our next guest is gonna be Northside Columbus head coach, Andrew Oropesa. Uh, they're in Class 5A, Region 3, and they're at the top of the standings with just one game left. They're going to square off with McIntosh this week. Um, they are currently on a, I believe, a seven-game win streak after a tough loss to LaGrange in the second week. LaGrange is an outstanding team in 4A, and so they have not lost within 5A yet this season and have been playing really well. They've got an outstanding running back, Malachi Hosley. We'll talk to him about that once we get him on. Coach, welcome on. How's it going? Good. I'm doing great. So, I and mean, what has impressed you uh, this season just with your team's execution and some of these uh, recent wins, including just the 39 nothing win last week to set up this big matchup with McIntosh? I think just that, of course, uh, and, uh, the thing that's probably most impressed me was uh, we're coming together as a team, not just a team, or a defensive team or special teams. We're starting to put it together and do some good things. So um, that's been good to see. Yep. And then, I mean, right out the gates this season, uh, you play Columbus, 42-7 win. You guys are up, uh, was it 35 nothing at the half? You're able to get a lot of guys involved. Uh, your quarterback, uh, Caden Clay was great. And then Malachi Hosley, just talk about how he's helped just uh, set the tone offensively this year and just how he's been able to run behind uh, your offensive line that's really been getting after it. Sure, yeah. He has a good player and a good young man. He's really taken the next step from his junior year to senior year. And, um, and you know, in part, the offensive line is great. I'm blocking for him. Our receiver's on the edge do a phenomenal job. We like to get the ball outside. Done a great job. And they've made plays as well in the past game, and so has Caden, and um, he's really had a good year. Yeah, and then uh, your receivers, you got two seniors that have been standing out. Uh, Cameron Hill, he's 6'2", 205, big physical guy. And then Kendra, or Kendra Davis, uh, he's also been outstanding. And then another playmaker that I want to mention is just Ward Walker, what he's been able to do uh, defensively for you guys this year. Yeah, Ward Walker has done a great job. I believe off the top of my head, at five sacks. He's a, coming in, he's played a little bit. He's played quarterback. He's long played about every special teams. And, and, and this year he had off to fill a void. Walker, and he's done a phenomenal job. Um, and, and we're looking for, you know, bigger things out of him in the future. And then your linebacker, Eric Cowley, Jr., is he also a fullback, kind of paving the way for Malachi? We, yeah, we have some uh, certain set, different personnel. He'll come in and play um, our H-back. Uh, he probably 10 snaps of there. And then, you know, most of the time he's on defense. All snaps for us as well. Yep, and in that first week he had a – Five tackles, one for a loss, and an interception. So you guys came out really strong. And then uh, that next week you visit LaGrange. I think they're a team that has a really big chance to make a deep run in 4A this year. They're outstanding. Uh, that was a really tight game. I guess it kind of got away at the end. But what would you guys take away from that one just to fuel this recent seven-game win streak? Yeah, LaGrange does a great job. They've got a great coaching staff and good players. And, 
heck, we were leading uh, probably with roughly three minutes left in the third quarter. And, um, you know, we knew LaGrange was going to be a tough test, and they took advantage of some of our mistakes. We turned it over, and we did get some stops on defense. And it it was truly one of those things that the score looked a whole lot worse than it was. And it, um, But to their credit, they did did what they were supposed to, and we didn't finish it the right. So that was kind of a – one of those teaching moments while we dominate or not dominate, we played well for three quarters. Um, we didn't play well for that last quarter, didn't put it all together. Yep. And then uh, the following week, you guys play Hardaway 37, sorry, 34 to 7 win defensively. I mean, you guys really shut them down. I don't think they broke 100 yards and just controlled the ball well. I'm looking at your offensive line, though. It looks like guys like Jacob Brown, uh, Devon Scott, I mean, how much experience did you have returning this year on the offensive line? Just what has impressed you about that group? We uh, got a mixed bag. We got two guys coming back that were seniors, and then um, we had three juniors that start. And then one of the juniors played a decent bit last year, and the other two were first-time starters. And then um, Devon Scott is a guy that we play at our H-back tight end receiver. Um, He's actually got five or six touchdown catches. He does a little bit of everything. Also runs the ball a little bit. But the offensive league, together, they get after it. Um, they play hard every play. And, and I think that's they're, they're a big reason why Malachi is able to have the success he's had this season. That's right. Yeah, Devon Scott is not an offensive lineman. That's my bet. <clears throat> yeah, in that Hardaway game, he had a rushing touchdown and a receiving touchdown. Uh, looks like defensively, uh, Malachi heard two interceptions in that Hardaway game. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Awesome. So, yeah, you guys start producing the turnovers. You get the early lead, uh, able to hold on to it, close it out. And that's been, I think, a theme for you guys. You guys have gotten off to some really fast starts. Yes, yeah, we've gotten off fast. We've been able to, um, like I said, our defense has really settled in to help. Helped our offense, and um, you know, when we can get off and, and score a couple of touchdowns early, our defense kind of puts the clamps on them. It's been good to see, you know. Um, so hopefully we can get trend. Yep, and then uh, you guys play Shaw the following week. Looks like Ashton Wilson was able to spark a punt return touchdown. I mean, how have you guys been in that department? Just uh, having uh, those guys that are returning the ball that can really uh, break plays. Yeah, Ash has done a great job for us. He played receiver and running back for us. He's got a few touchdowns there. Uh, plays corner. So he's, he's another guy that plays a lot of football. And we felt that week that we might have had an opportunity to block one. And it was uh, we capitalized on it, you know. And um, that's an area where, where we could improve a little bit this season. And I felt like in the special teams area we have, and especially in that, that got a long return off a um, back look, and, and we did a good job in, in all three phases in that game. Yeah, and, I mean, really, we mentioned the LaGrange one. You guys were up in the third. They got some points late. But, I mean, defensively, you guys have done a great job of keeping teams out of the end zone this season. So what have you just seen from the defense? Uh, you mentioned just coming together this year. I think the key for us defense, Defensively has been to the football. Um, we're getting there. We're playing fast. Is everything perfect on every? Absolutely not. But, but um, we've got a group of guys that are really in what we're trying to do, and they enjoy playing with one another and for one another. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they they really, like I said, run to the football. But then it will turn over. So it's a little bit more than we have the first two years. And I think we're really starting to see um, some success in that area because of that. And then uh, walk me through that Sumter County game. I was trying to look at some stats in that one. Uh, were you guys up like 34-7 in that one and then held on, was a 48-27 win? We, we got early, I'm thinking about the um, 13, um, maybe by two scores, and we settled in offensively. And um, they, they have a quarterback that's a phenomenal athlete and a couple of receivers, and they were really hurting us in that area, and, and um, it was kind of forth, uh, fair for a little bit, and then we were able to pull away offensively and, you know, kind of seal the deal. So, Yeah, and I think uh, Kendra Davis had a big kickoff return in that one. Malachi Hurd, who we talked about, had the two interceptions against Hardaway, comes up with the interception. 
a forced fumble and a tackle for loss. He's flying to the football. And then let's just talk about that final game before the region. Uh, you guys have had a lot of success that non-region schedule, but what did you see in the West over game, just being able to close out that 35 nothing win? You guys have an explosive second quarter and really just uh, find your groove. I felt like we might have played a complete game in that West over game, I think, from other maybe the first drive offensively. Um, I felt like um, we played our best football in that game. Um, we settled in offensively after that, last one on the drives. And, and defense, we put ourselves in some bad positions. Right? West never got in really close and we were able to hold them um, to no point. So that was a good thing, something that we hadn't really been able to do. So that might have been our most complete game of the season. And, you know, we've done some good things since then, but at that moment, um, we definitely played well. Yes, you guys did. And uh, your quarterback, Caden Clay, 12 of 18, 154, two touchdowns. And then it looked like Malachi actually was able to toss a touchdown in that game. So, I mean, how fun was that? Right, yeah. And that's within our regular offense, what we were able to do. Um, so, he, you know, he was able to connect with Ashton Wilson on that play. And, you know, that was a good way to um, our offense coordinator. He did a great job making the call. And um, it was there, and they were able to capitalize on it. So, that was good to see. Yeah, but had a big pass in that Northgate game also. Uh, but then in that Harris County matchup, that's how you guys are opening the region. You guys lost last year 44-14, the year before 41-21. So, I mean, how focused were you guys going into that one, knowing uh, what Harris County can do? And then just what did it take to get that 21-7 win? Yeah, Harris County does a good job. They've got a good coach and staff, and they really – you know, playing up there, it, you know, it's kind of a rivalry. They're right down the road. And um, they really came out and set the tone and, and, and were really physical. And um, it took us a while offensively to settle in and, and relax and play. And once we did that, we were able to move the football a little bit. Our, our defense did a, a pretty good job from the, from the start. It was just a matter of us clicking on offense. And it was nice to see us make the adjustments after halftime and come out and settle down and, be able to uh, finish out one out the right way. Yep, and then the Northgate, another big win, 33-27, uh, hard fought right there. They're currently kind of in that second place slot in the region, so you guys will have the tiebreaker over them. Uh, just how big was that game uh, against Northgate, able to pull away in that one? It, yeah, it was a big win, and, and Coach McDonald and his staff, they did a job. It was another one where we wanted to play. He turned her three times out of our first four positions offensively and started as fast as we could start. Um, our defense held, um, you know, our own was able to hold them to two field goals. And if they don't do that, I don't know if we win that ball. And um, them able to do that and us to finally get our groove offensively and, and move the football and get some key state um, victory. It was, it was a good uh, comeback win because we got down – 13 nothing early and it looked as bad as we could look on offense and we're able to overcome it um, and finish out the game. Yeah, that is huge. So, yeah, they had the three drives, a touchdown, two field goals. You guys storm back, though, go up 20-13 to 13 at the break and then hold them off 33-27. Another big game from Caden Clay. Obviously, Malachi uh, getting it done, catching the ball throwing the ball, passing, or running the ball as well, and then a big play by Ashton Wilson kind of lift you guys over them, an 81-yard touchdown, I believe. And then just what did you see from your offensive line in that game, just knowing that they're going to have to really give that just all-out effort for four quarters uh, just in that tough region battle? Yeah, they did a good job. It was kind of similar to the Harris County game. They realized, oh, this team's firing off and, you know, be it physical. And once they realize, well, you know, um, we can, you know, be physical as well, it helped them settle down. And um, like I said, I think it was good while at the time, you know, it was stressful, but it was good to see us win in a different method and, and get down and, and fight adversity and, and um, be able to stick with the game plan and execute it. It was good to see. And they were a big part of that reason. Yep. And then you guys had that uh... – Previous game against Drew, I think that was a Thursday one. Uh, you guys obviously went into that one with the upper hand in the region. They were 0-7, I believe, 0-1 at that point. 
but it looks like you guys just executed really well, jumped out to that massive uh, 39 nothing lead at the half. Right, yeah, we were able to execute in all, all phases there. Um, only thing we could have worked on, missed a couple extra points, um, but we got that cleaned up. But, you know, we were able to move and put them on, and put them on defense. And the second half, we were able to get some guys in and get them a, a quality reps. That's We're, we're hoping that will help um, going forward. Yep, and am I seeing this correctly? Your six foot two, three hundred pound offensive tackle, Jacob Brown, was able to get a touchdown in that game. That's correct. That's correct. We had a um, special play in there for him, and um, it timed up perfect. Got down there, <clears throat> excuse me, down to where we felt comfortable calling it, and uh, we made the call, and he, you know. He enjoyed that, and our team enjoyed it. And, and he's a good player and a good kid, and he deserves you know, that recognition. Did he do a celebration or just kind of play it cool? I'm not sure he knew what to do, um, <laughs> but he he was he was excited. He probably played it uh, more cool than anything else. No, he didn't. He didn't do a celebration. That's awesome. So yeah, he had touched on that one. I mentioned 39 nothing lead at the half. So. I mean, you guys set yourself up for this next big one against McIntosh. They're a great football team. Uh, it's going to be a tough game for you guys, but, I mean, the region championship is in your past. So what's just the overall mindset been uh, just with the Northside program this week? Well, you know, um, we're not hiding from it. Uh, this is our, you know, last regular season game, and our kids know – um, what's at stake, and I think they're excited for the opportunity to possibly uh, secure a first region championship in the history of the school. And um, and the same token, we are taking it day by day at practice and hoping we put four good days together and we'll see the results on um, – hopefully good results on Friday. And um, Coach does a great job at McIntosh. He's got some things going, um, new coach coming in, and we're looking for the opportunity uh, to compete in that game. Yep, and then just since being at Northside, I mean, we talked to some coaches where they kind of have a three- or four-year plan. I mean, how have you been able to just build up towards this season and uh, just have this uh, these great results so far? Well, you know, when we first got here, um, you know, COVID hit two months later, so that threw a wrench in, into some of the stuff. But we, we knew we had a good group um, at the time. They were sophomores. We a lot of sophomores that year started eight off the top of my head and played another four, um, you know, a uh, bit of reps. So now they're seniors, so we're starting to see, you know, it's kind of getting over the hump a little bit. But we did, of course, and, you know, we've got great kids, parents, and administration, and they all thought in what we were trying to do. And, um, you know, like everything with coaching changes, it came to a process, and they were able to trust. It. And now we're starting to see some of, um, you know, some good results from that. And then not necessarily what concerns you be, but like what stands out just watching McIntosh uh, just in terms of what they've been able to do this year and uh, just in, and meeting the challenge just uh, in some of their areas or some of their game styles. Well, you know, they're, they're a different team than they have been in the past. Um, they do a job, you know, offensively and defensively, offensively. Um, they've been players, you know, out wide. They do – they got a good quarter can they do they do a good job spreading the ball around so it's going to be a challenge and defensively they play really hard um so i think it's going to be a four quarter game and we're hoping um that we'll be able to compete to the best of our ability and then just so far i mean defensively who's been kind of that vocal leader for you uh where i mean he's kind of getting his guys fired up he's holding each other accountable he's just kind of play in every single snap, just having that mindset where there's a lot of pride in your defense and who has been that MVP. You don't have to name names, but if anyone no, has. I think, you know, we, we've had guys, you know, and I'm going to leave, but, you know, Eric Callen has been a callus for us defensively, and um, our, he's done a good job. I believe he's leading tackles. He's not necessarily a vocal guy, but he leads by – the effort he gives on every snap. And um, Dejuan DeLoach is um, a returning starter, had a good junior year and good, you know, he's doing good things this year. He's more of our vocal guy. And, you know, he's going to Jacksonville State. He's, he's a talented young man. But 
it's not just those two guys. We've got several guys across the board that have been good teams. You may have you know, Derek Lockhart on the back end and um, Jamil Garner and Jake Dowell up front and, and others. So it's really team effort. They truly you know, care about one another, play for each other, and that's probably been the most important more than anything. Yep, and then obviously, I mean, you guys have had to have put a ton of work in in the weight room. Uh, you guys are matching these opponents with the speed and strength and physicality. But what are just the expectations uh, for this year's team? Just after all this, you guys don't want it to go to waste. You want to kind of use this season to catapult the program, let people know what you guys are doing there. So and what are the expectations for just uh, the rest of this 2022 season? Well, I think the expectation is going to be um, we're still going to take, you know, one game at a time. We're still, you know, McIntosh and championship on the line. But, you know, it's the most important game because it's the next one in front of us. So we're, um, we're hoping to take that mindset, you know, and put all these games together. And hopefully we've got a good result at the end. And, you know, we're, we'll build off of it. We played well, so we've still got one more um, regular season game, you know, to – to get done and we're hoping we finish that on a positive note. Yep, and then, I mean, we've had some coaches come in where they'll say every classification is wide open. They don't buy into uh, the idea that some aren't, but w it comes up a lot that Class 5A really does look wide open this year. And what's your overall sense of uh, what you've seen in it? I just think there's good, good teams in every single region. Um, you know, we were fortunate enough to, you know, coach some other ones at other schools in South Georgia. And you know, South Georgia ball is good. And North Georgia is good. And, and you know, we're in that area and, and North is good. So I don't think you're going to find an easy out anywhere going forward. You know, the state of Georgia is important for to have good athletes in all classifications. So I'll probably agree that, you know, that classification is pretty solid. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, Coach, thank you so much for coming on. I really enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be seeing what the Patriots do this week. We will have close eyes on that result. And uh, best of luck, Coach. Thanks for having me. Enjoyed it. Yep, you bet. Go Patriots. All right. So there goes Coach Oropesa. We will be, as I mentioned, watching that one. How exciting would that be? A first-ever region championship. And then heading into the playoffs, they've got – a great kind of formula for this year's team. The running back mentioned all the offensive linemen, the defense with Eric Cowling Jr., the tackling machine, and they have been doing a great job. So another game to watch, but we're going to take one more quick break and thank our wonderful sponsors, the Georgia Farm Bureau. Our mission has always been to support Georgia farmers. That's why we created Georgia Farm Bureau Mutual Insurance Company, providing financial protection that farmers needed. While this remains the same today, we've grown to protect all Georgians through home, auto, and life insurance. From the very beginning and into the future, we stand for every Georgia community. We are our Farm Bureau. All right, welcome back. So Naj is going to come on in a minute. We'll break some of this recent news I had mentioned with the transfers and then talk about what we have coming up later this week and the weeks ahead. I do want to talk about uh, the volleyball state playoffs. <clears throat> the quarterfinals started last night with 7A, 5A, 3A, and Class A. The remainder of the classifications will finish tonight. But man, my rankings, they looked really good. So in 7A, my top four are all still in it in the semis, so four for four. In Class 5A, I've got my number one, number two, number three, and number five with Jefferson in it. Not bad. Class 3A, number one, Oconee County, number two, Morgan County, number three, Sandy Creek, and number seven, White County. But number four, Hebron lost to number three, Sandy Creek. Number five, Savannah Christian lost to Sandy Creek. And number six, Westland lost to Morgan County. So those still held up. And then Class A, I've got my number one at my number two. With Mount Bethel, Mount Pisgah, my number three lost to number two. My number four beat number six, Galloway. And then number eight, Mount Vernon's in there. Uh, they beat my number five, Prince Avenue Christian. So out of all the semifinalists in my rankings, only one 
uh, went against the hierarchy, I suppose. So why is that? I think volleyball is pretty easy to predict just when you look at the, the sets. It's not just about they won 3 nothing. whereas the algorithm for max preps, they'll go by the strength of schedule versus the wins. But, I mean, if you look at a team like Buford and then they'll play the number eight team, if they're winning the set 25 to 12, you know that, okay, that wasn't just a sweep. They really are rolling. So I think uh, we'll see how they hold up with three more classifications. But anyway, go to scorytail.com. You can check out all the scores for softball and volleyball. But we're going to get into it, talk a little football with Najee Wilkins. Do we have him on? Awesome. So, Najee, when you texted me last night that transfer news, it was almost hard to believe uh, what a massive uh, breaking story that is. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it was pretty big. It was uh, broke by Luke Winstall. Um, you know, I believe he reports for Clemson. But, yeah, so he's transferring to Langston Hughes. So Langston Hughes gets another weapon. They're adding to their arsenal of already kind of, a, you know, elite team. Um, so I'm curious to see how they kind of put him in. I don't know if he's going to play this week. Um, but, I mean, you add that to that already. Kendall Barnes, Prentice Aaron Nolan, Justice Savage, uh, DJ Lockhart, um, I believe it's Jelani Thurman. They have weapons galore. Um, so they are on a collision course, I believe, to hit back to that state championship game. And you just add another weapon to the arsenal. And then, you know, from the other standpoint, kind of a big loss for Grayson. Um, obviously, Caden Hyde is their big, their, uh, big play guy. But, I mean, JoJo Stones equally as good. And last game, we saw him make, you know, that kind of toe drag swag catch that I thought was phenomenal by him. And, you know, you don't have that playmaker no more. Now, obviously, some other guys are going to have to step up. I mean, they do have other guys. Mason Humphrey can step up, obviously. But, you know, when it comes to November, and obviously, you know, even we want to play in December, got to be well balanced, I think, in my opinion. They run the ball very well. Um, Austin, for them, had over 160 yards in the last game. Joe Taylor, four touchdowns. But obviously, if people are stacking the box, you wouldn't be able to throw the ball with Jeff Davis and be able to hit your playmaker. So that's going to be interesting to see how that goes as the season progresses and late into the um, playoffs. Yeah, I mean, you can lose a player, whether it's an injury or if the opponent is kind of just doing a good job of uh, kind of negating them. But I think the real thing is this just makes Hughes even better. I mean, they are they've been so dominant already it's just hard to think they're adding another weapon and then Prentice Aaron Nolan we've seen his arm strength which is unbelievable his passing ability he was a guy that rarely throws an interception I think Douglas County is the only one that's been able to do it pretty much in like two years so I mean he is going to bring I think a lot to Hughes to a team that is already one of, if not the best offenses in the state. So, yeah, huge story. I was completely shocked. For sure. I yeah. mean, yeah, huge story. And one more time, who broke it? What's his name, Luke? I think Luke Winstall. Let me double yeah. check on, on Twitter. That's right. Let me yeah. try it. Right he does a great Luke. job covering high school sports and all the news. So that is a big story for sure. So go to Twitter, check that out. Uh, should be all over at this point, but – Wanted to ask you, um, I mean, we had Milton on. That's a team we've kind of mentioned this year. And just what their final two games looks like. I mean, Denmark and Lambert back-to-back -back weeks. We mentioned their big uh, region win streak dating back to 2017. As a program that plays with a lot of pride, they're going to be a, a stiff challenge. But I mean, what do you think their chances are of running the table on this region? I mean, it would be intriguing. Like you mentioned earlier in the show, they haven't lost the region game since 2017, and you're playing some pretty marquee opponents in Denmark and obviously Lambert. Lambert's undefeated right now. They're having a phenomenal season. Um, this year, I thought Milton's played great. They've played some tough teams. Uh, they played North Cobb. They've had some tough, tough, tough competition. They've been you know, asking some of the young players to play well. Luke Nichols, sophomore quarterback. Um, Jordan, um, I think he's Murkowski. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing his name, but – you know, he's this is his first time kind of stepping into that big role. Obviously, he played last year, but Jordan McDonald had a lot of the um, the carries in that one. So he's stepping into a big role. LeBron Gatlin's having a great year. Um, so, I mean, I, just to be where they're at is incredible. They lost Adam Clack, their head coach, when they went to the state championship game. No Joel Connell, who's now at jo Johns Creek. Labus Overton's at Texas A&M. Jordan McDonald's at UCF. Devin Farrell's at Virginia Tech. I mean, to lose all these players and just to be back in prime position to win the region championship, I think says a lot what the program is doing and what uh, Coach Reeves is doing um, down there out in Milton. So um, Denmark game obviously would be big. And then if they're able to handle business and win that, they got a region championship on the line against Lambert. 
Um, so curious to see how they're going to look in a couple of weeks and, you know, what they're able to do. Yep. And that was such a big win for them to get that one over Roswell after playing those two tough out-of-state teams. They're certainly battle-tested, and I think it is interesting where – when you would think of a Milton team, you think of, oh, they're going to run the ball. That's not the case this year. DeBron Gatlin has been outstanding. He can have eight catches. He can even have 12. He can just go off. So they're a really exciting team. And uh, they'll put the pressure on those great defenses of Lambert and Denmark. Uh, that game isn't necessarily going to be the region championship, but it will almost guarantee it for Milton. There are a couple games though that will crown it you have colquitt county versus Fadasta. Uh, carrollton's already clinched get this though in region three harrison plays marietta for the region title this year that's unbelievable after harrison's one in six start but hey the games matter in the region north cobb can clinch it with cherokee buford with mountain view so that's something we will be definitely updating this week but i wanted to talk to you i mean this time of year We've got basketball coming up. I mentioned all the fall sports are kind of wrapping up. Uh, you're going to be debuting a brand new show tomorrow. So talk a little bit about that and what we're going to be able to cover. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, next, um, tomorrow will be a great show. Uh, the show is called Keeping It Real with Najee Wilkins. Um, so tune into NFHS Network and also Square Atlanta's YouTube page. Um, live will be on NFHS Network. And then Square Atlanta's YouTube page will have um, all the episodes uploaded. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, I think it's going to be awesome. I have two guests already tomorrow. It's going to be Cedric King, Lovejoy coach. They won the state title last year, um, you know, and, you know, they're returning the majority of their starters and the majority of their team. Second slot will be Kim Hickson, uh, the head coach for Maris. They also won a state championship last year. I'm curious to see they moved up this year from 4A last year to 6A. So how can they deal with that kind of heightened level of competition and, you know, heightened level of um, teams they're going to play this year? I'm curious to see how they're going to look. And then um, third slot, obviously, will be Craig, who's going to join the show, kind of help me out, break down some women's basketball. We'll be looking at, you know, some rankings. We'll be looking at some players that have transferred over. And then we'll jump into a little bit of softball and volleyball. So I'm very excited for that. Also, guys, make sure you guys stay tuned. Me and Craig are having a duo show. Score Atlanta's dynamic duo will be debuting November 1st at noon. We will be talking about it'll be an hour and 15-minute show. 30 minutes will probably be about high school sports. And then the other 45 will be about college sports and things like that. So we're excited for that. Me and Craig will have that. We're still figuring out the logistics and everything of, you know, whether we're going to debut it live on YouTube or if we're just going to, you know, do it recorded and then upload it on YouTube. We're still figuring that part out. But equipment is supposed to come tomorrow. So that's going to be very exciting to set up. That would be a really good show with me and him um, as the duo to kind of, you know, talk about all sports, uh, essentially football, basketball, uh, baseball, soccer, tennis, whatever it is. So um, I'm definitely excited about that. Absolutely. And, wow, I'm excited for your guest. Uh, Kim Hickson, Marist head coach, they had an incredible run last season. If you, you look at some of the the games they won, I, I mean, I think they had like a double buzzer beater game where they forced overtime with a buzzer beater, then uh, hit a layup at the end. They had to battle through Stevenson, all these other schools to win the state title. And then, yeah, Cedric King and Lovejoy, they are really good. They've got uh, Brianna Preston coming back at guard. She's outstanding, one of the best players in the state. Uh, so, yeah, that's a great lineup right there. We look forward to that. And <clears throat> I mean, we talk about how good Georgia high school football is, but, I mean, even just – Looking at basketball, I think in particular the girls' basketball in Georgia, by far the best anywhere. Yeah, uh, um, honestly, it is. I mean, even like the Lovejoy, I'm, I'm going to ask the coach tomorrow, Cedric King, about them. Um, last year they played um, Norcross. Norcross was a 7 8 state champion. Uh, they won, I believe, a close game. It might have been 61 58. I have to go back and check the score. But they have them again on the schedule this year. So I'm um, curious to see how they're going to look in that one. Uh, Norcross, obviously, we know is incredible in basketball in the state so I'm curious to see you know what's this kind of rationale for you know playing across and I believe it's just to you know expose these kids to the best kind of competition that out there and to get them ready for like the run they had last year so um, I'm excited to talk with them for sure yeah I mean with the new classifications the new regions the region tournaments are going to be really exciting and then uh, yeah just a lot of upcoming stars Kate Harpring Everyone knows the Harpring name at Maris. She's coming into her freshman year, already a standout player. Her dad, obviously, the great Matt Harpring. So 
Really excited for tomorrow's show. That will be fun. But what else just this week on the gridiron are you looking forward to uh, just with our game and just around the state? Yeah, I have a bunch. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with Alpharetta. Uh, they're going to play Blessed Trinity. That's going to be my game of the week. Make sure you guys go to scoreatl.com. Uh, we'll be uh, talking about the game preview in that game. Uh, Blessed Trinity is known kind of as a predominantly run football team. Last year they had Justice Hayes, who's now currently at Buford, ran the ball really well last year. So um, coming into this game, can Alpharetta stop that kind of rushing attack? Ben Gunther is having a great season, 2,314 yards, 29 touchdowns to just five interceptions. Peep this stat, Craig. They have nearly four receivers on their team with 500 yards receiving. So you talk about playmakers. I mean, they have it. That is insane. Two of their receivers have combined for 16 touchdowns altogether. The offensive line is loaded. They have three Division One guys and Obadia Abazier. He is an NC State commit. Elias Cloy is a Georgia Tech commit. And then Parker Peterson is a Memphis commit. So you talk about an old line that's deep and loaded. They have two 6'6 guys at over 290 pounds on that offensive line. So that is a pretty deep offensive line. And then also, they played nine guys this year on the offensive line due to injury. So you talk about some good depth and some good athletes on that line. I mean, this is kind of an under radar team I think could be dangerous. And if they win this game, upcoming against Buster Training, they will battle out Roswell for a region championship. So that's a, a game I'm keeping my eye on. Lacey Hughes versus Paul, South Paulding. Jamarion Wilcox last game had 28 carries for 254 yards and five touchdowns. So you talk about production, that guy has it. He has 1,705 uh, yards for 24 touchdowns on the year. Can he still be able to have that kind of performance against an elite Langston Hughes defense? That will be an absolute battle, I believe. Um, if South Paulding can win that game, it kind of opens the door, um, you know, for Douglas to turn the region title. Um, if they lose, Langston Hughes basically, basically secures the region title. So I'm going to see how they look in that one and – Langston Hughes are beating their teams by 20-plus points all year long. So that would be, honestly, a great matchup. And you mentioned it, Craig, Harrison versus Marietta, region title on the line. Uh, Marietta had a very tough non-region schedule. Obviously, um, I talked to the coach. They want to, you know, go to a state championship game. and want to win a state championship game. You know, that's their goal. Um, but, um, you know, can they win this region title? You know, that's the biggest question. And then Harrison, 1-6 right now, 3-6, and six, playing very well in the region. Can also secure um, a region title after – tough start to the season. Then you got Valdosta and Colquitt. Colquitt is 8-0. and uh, Valdosta is 8-1. and uh, Colquitt remains undefeated, and they're absolutely rolling. Valdosta was undefeated until they fell to Camden County last week, 17-14. Very close-knit game there. Um, you know, Ahmad Denson ran the ball really well for them, 19 carries, 142 yards, a touchdown. Biggest question now is how will Valdosta respond to the adversity that they've hit and losing that close game? Will Colquitt close out the region title in this game and win it? Um, so it's a big one for both teams. I think uh, uh, Valdosta has a very good de uh, defense. Amari White and obviously Eric Brantley Jr., one of the best defensive lines, I think, in the state. How will they look? How will they rebound against Coquit County? In the last game, Parkview and Brookwood. Big, kind of a big game for both of these teams. The winner has some breathing room in the region, more opportunity for a home playoff game. Um, how will Brookwood respond after that loss to Grayson? Can they get the uh, ball to their playmakers? Bryce Dobson, Miles Massingill, and the crew. Um, a win puts Brookwood right there to secure that two seed um, with one game left against South Carolina at home. Uh, then for Parkview, they threw a touchdown as time expired, couldn't convert the two-point conversion. How will they respond? Will they be up for the challenge? Um, how can they battle against adversity? If they win, they will be playing Grayson for the region title next week. Um, I believe it's at home. I have to double check. But a loss, they could be a four seed, especially if Newton handles business this week against South Gwinnett. Newton is one and two, but they did defeat Parkview last week. So, um, a win against South Gwinnett for Newton moves them at 2-2 two and two in the region. So those are some big games to keep my eye on so far. Obviously, we'll dive into our top 30 uh, on Friday, but those are some games that caught my eye. Yeah, this is going to be a top 30 to narrow down. Who would you mention, though, with Colquitt County? Was it Nico Fan that's been phenomenal for them? Yes. Yeah, yes. so, I mean, their offense against Valdosta's defense, that's a great matchup. And then one more that we've obviously talked about, we'll mention it again on Friday – Lee County against Thomas County Central. I mean, Lee County having yeah. that ridiculous loss last week. If anyone didn't see that clip, it is insane. They had the ball on the 50-yard line. They're up. There's fourth seven down. seconds left on fourth down. They drop back to pass. The ball comes out loose, and then uh, Northside Warner Robbins is able to return it at the buzzer. And, you, I mean, you have players they just cannot believe they lost that game. So that was a big one for Northside, but, man – playing Lee County after that, 
uh, you're definitely going to get kind of that extra anger, that desire to win, and then Thomas County Central is undefeated to head into that. That's going to be another great game. So, so many big games. We'll be back tomorrow, though, with uh, keeping it real with Najee. So tune in for that for sure, and we'll see you then.